Welcome to Eco Green Equipment's first QA, and we're going to be speaking with the owner and CEO, Brad Swenson, and the service manager, Ben Rogers. All right, first question, looking to process 140 car tires per hour, what system is best for this? All right, well, first off, pleasure to be here. Um, all of our equipment is designed to handle those types of volumes. Uh, 100 car tires to 140 car tires an hour, you're looking at roughly a capacity of one to one and a half tons an hour. Um, you know, the big variable that you're gonna have to look at is what type of uh, material you're processing and what size you wanna get down to, but all of our equipment is capable of handling that size. Yeah, like Brad was saying, that the biggest factor in what equipment you would want would be what you want out of the equipment, whether you want powder, chrome, mulch, TDF, that, that would determine on what equipment you would want to purchase from us. Um, all of it's really easily, um, you know, it can handle that amount, the ton, ton and a half an hour. Um, our equipment would definitely handle that. And, yeah. Great. All right, next question. How long does it take to get the machine from date of order to delivery? So this just depends on when you order. Um, you know, on a fast delivery, we have everything in stock and basically there's a little bit of engineering and it's delivered within 30 days. Um, on a normal ordering schedule, you're about four to five months uh, for delivery. Perfect. All right, next question. How often should equipment be maintained? Uh, that's right up my alley. Um, <laughs> daily. Um, it's, it's important to get into these machines every day, see what's going on. Um, we've designed the equipment in in a way that it's easily maintained. It's easy to work on. Um, doors open up. It's it's e we've designed it so that the customer will do the maintenance. We've designed it around maintenance so that it gets done. Because when maintenance isn't done, then that's when you start seeing catastrophic failures. Um, and and successful plants do maintenance daily, routine maintenance. So absolutely, maintenance is at the heart of your operation. Um, if your maintenance program is fix it when it breaks you're gonna have a real hard time uh, operating. If you do what Ben says, that daily uh, maintenance, uh, making sure you know what's going on in your machines, you're gonna be very successful. And our engineers have spent a ton of time designing this equipment from the ground up to make sure it is very maintainable. Great. All right, next question. What kind of capital is required to get this business started? That's a great question. There are a lot of variables in how much it's going to cost to get, get this venture off the ground. Um, the first thing you got to identify is, okay, what market are you attacking? Um, when you recycle these tires, you know, are you going to be selling it as TDF, uh, mulch, uh, crumb rubber, rubber powder? Um, are you going to be creating value-added products and molding the rubber? Um, all those things uh, are variables that will affect what the capital expenditure is. Um, obviously, the smaller the size you go down to typically requires a larger investment in a larger property, more space. Uh, the more tires you process, the more area you need. Um, the less tires you process, the less area you need. Um, so it's different in every area. Some areas you want to do the higher volumes because you have the density um, and you have the outlets for the product. Other areas, a smaller volume makes more sense um, and focus on the higher value products. But you can get into this anywhere from, you know, two to 300,000 all the way up to five or $6 million, uh, depending on what your needs are. Great. All right, the next question is, how do you source tires to recycle and create value added products? Oh, that's another fantastic question, and, it, and it's different by region. That's really a, a, a question of geography. Are you in an area that pays tipping fees to get the tires? Are you in an area where you have to pay to get the tires? Um, are there associations that manage the tires? Uh, these are things that you have to spend a little time studying. Uh, from the past 10 years of experience, We've never had someone uh, purchase a plant from us that hasn't been able to get the tires. They, they are a waste. There's over a billion tires a year produced and you know they're a worldwide problem. So in all these areas, it's just a matter of understanding uh, the nature of the area you're in and how it works down there. Yeah, like, like Brad was saying, they, they are a worldwide problem. I mean, every, every place that I've gone, I mean, there are tires everywhere. You know, I was in, 
in Saudi Arabia and you know it's just like miles and miles and miles of tire piles and it it's it's really sad and you know it's a worldwide problem so it's glad that we can help be a solution to it absolutely great all right next question is scrap tire rubber currently used in highway construction if not why Oh, it is absolutely used in, in highways and, and roads. It's used in asphalt um, is where you see it. It's doubling the life of roads. It increases the amount of life of tires on cars. And it's a major noise reduction uh, you know, for, for cities. And that, that's a big deal. But here in, here in the United States, you know, different states have mandates. California mandates a certain amount of rubber to be in theirs. Um, Arizona mandates and several other states those are just some examples but it is absolutely used it's a, a huge consumer of recycled tires and in the international markets it's a growing uh, commodity how does tire recycling impact efforts to combat climate change would widespread adoption make a difference so tires don't really have a big impact on climate change tires are a waste issue they are a health issue. Uh, from a waste standpoint, they you can't landfill them because they float. You know, everybody's seen the fields where there's half tires sticking up and half under dirt, um, and it's a weird concept to think that something can float in land, but because of the density of tires, you can bury them, they will eventually work their way up to the surface. Um, they are a major health hazard. They, they trap water. Um, and they create breeding grounds for mosquitoes, which as we all know are a huge um, contributor to, to malaria and dengue and, 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 and the, the Zika virus. So those are the areas where you're really making a difference is in, in, in the waste and, and health sector. The other area is a safety standpoint um, with regard to fires. Um, tire fires are infamous you know once they start burning they're hard to put out the fire burns inside the tire where you can't get uh, repellents and retardants so tire fires are a major issue the more tire piles we have the more tire fires that, that there will be yeah and i was just going to second that talking about fires i mean like brad was saying they when they when they catch on fire it's you know almost impossible to put them out because they burn inside you can't get the water in there um, and the mosquito grounds are you know you go to facilities where they're they've been storing tires for a long time and there's just mosquitoes everywhere i mean you just and it's it's pretty miserable so you know just seconding everything that brad was saying there it's it's tires are they're a problem and they they do need to be recycled so perfect all right next question what are the top selling rubber items that are made from tire recycling Oh, that's, that's a great question. Probably the biggest industry that's a consumer of tire recycling material is the construction industry. Um, your recycled rubber goes into flooring that's molded goods. Uh, it goes into uh, roads, as we talked about previously. Uh, it goes into sound insulation. Um, you see it in gyms. Uh, you see it in safety and traffic. Those are all huge areas that, that consume it. Yeah, but the thing that I notice most is like anytime I'm I'm out walking some somewhere and I like step on something and it's like, hey, that's n that's nice to walk on. Well, <laughs> chances are it's recycled tires or recycled rubber, and that's that's when I notice it the most or places I notice it and see it the most. So yeah, it's and the other thing that's amazing to me is every time you go into a plant, it seems like a customer has found a new market that you didn't know about before they started doing it. It's just continues to grow. Great. All right. Last question. Is the recycled rubber, especially crumb rubber, used in surfaces safe? Oh, absolutely. There's been tons of studies done, done with this over the last uh, 10 years, um, testing it. The, uh, probably the funniest study that I think I heard was um, they did a calculation of how much crumb rubber uh, a person or a child would have to consume to have it be dangerous and cause cancers and things like that. And it was like 52 pounds a day of crumb rubber or rubber mold. So no, it's definitely safe. Um, it is, you know, in playgrounds and on sports fields, it has absolutely reduced the amount of injuries that are there and increased the, the 
the physical life of the athletes uh, performing on it. Yeah, um, yeah, they put it in, in kids' playgrounds. I mean, it's got to be safe, right? Um, especially in this day and age. Um, I've got it at my house. My kids love it. It's soft. Um, it, it keeps them, you know, when they fall off the trampoline, it's absorbent. So I, I think that it's not dangerous, but it's actually safe. Perfect. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate it. Uh, for our audience, if you have any other questions, make sure to comment below and we will use them in the next Q&A. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the bell to be notified.